I'm Queen Shan Shan, and this is a broadcast podcast. This is your girl, Queen Shan Shan. Welcome to a brand new episode of A Broadcast Podcast. Last time I checked the stats, we now have listeners in Mongolia and South Korea. So, Sanbano and Ayong! In this episode, we welcome Vicente Luna. Now, disclaimer, put on your diapers Do some mouth exercises because you're going to laugh very hard today. Your bladder will not be able to sustain. Your jaw will be hurting by smiling so hard. (laughs) I can't wait for you guys to meet Vicente. We welcome Vicente, an actor, a writer, director, producer, production coordinator, a chef, a comedian, a lady of the night, and a part-time proctologist. Just kidding. He is really a true jack of all trades. And we dish about how we met through mutual friends and our little trip we planned together three years ago in Paris. He has a nice little cute film. It's cute. It's really cute. Is it cute? Super cute. It's super cute. A cute uh, independent film called Kiddo, written and directed by Vicente. The real tea about the film industry and the movie industry, what people really don't know but goes behind the scenes... The Madonna Minute, honey. We always have to have the Madonna Minute. Vicente actually worked with Madonna, and I cannot wait to hear the true tea on that. And we have a new segment called Why, Florida? Why? All this and more after the break. Vicente. Jace. What are you hungry for? Ooh, pasta. What about gnocchi? Oh, jammy. Freshly sprinkled with oregano. Oh, cr- Okay. I know the amazing restaurant in Burbank called Ma's Italian Kitchen. Oh, text it to me right now, girl. It is. Ma'sItalianKitchen.com. Ma's is a cozy eatery offering simple and classic Italian food at reasonable prices. They strive to find the right ingredients to create flavors and dishes satisfying to the palate without the frills. Sounds good? Cheers, please. Tell them Queen Shan Shan sent you. Hunty! Vicente. Hey, go hey. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I am so excited you're here. I haven't seen you in a million years. I know. I know. I was just saying the last time you were here, your hair was very different, but that it's because you wear wigs. Yes. Um, but no, it was, uh, <laughs> you were doing the floors. It looks gorgeous in here. Oh, thank it really you. Looks fantastic oh, has it been that here. long since you've been here? I know. It's been a super long time. Well, yeah. you have had a very interesting year and a half mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that we'll get into, but I'm yeah. so glad you're here. Yeah, me too. I am so happy to be here. Obviously, I'm a huge fan. I've Thank you. I've to many episodes. We were talking about it earlier. Thank you. And I'm happy to, to, to provide any kind of support. And also, just being here is a gift. I'm thankful to you, to the both of you, for letting me be a part of this. And we have, of Thank course, you. the both of us is also Edward. Hi, Edward. Hi, guys. So what is the deal now? Because I've Devin and Edward, and I've heard you call them both. And I'm yes. Like, I want to know, and I think listeners want to know, because I've been sitting in Edward home. is the stage name. It's my stage name. Yes. But I've been exposed now, so I'm Always like, exposed. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go by Edward for, from now on anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I do work in the business, and I kind of wanted to keep my identity yeah, uh, concealed for for reasons. That, yeah, right, of course. For reasons that are like employment reasons. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, yeah, no, um, but this but is yeah. an all black audience. So you're fine. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, so. after, and after tonight, it's an all Mexican black audience. You know? that, we're exactly. Really, we're breaking that, the, the best the, of both worlds. The, the oh, ceiling. Yeah. We're, we're breaking the all boundaries. Oh, and we are, we are already violating one big rule. 
Who's got their phone on? Their phone. Yes. Is, that, is that our first day? I'm fired. Is that the assistant director? Tiffany, get over here. Yes. What did I tell you, Tiffany? Damn Tiffany's it. fired. Tiffany's fired. She's getting her Cobra papers today. Seriously. Um, You guys, Vicente is... Uh, I, I met Vicente. Vicente. Vis, Vil, Viel. Yeah. Um, Through mutual friends at Rick's party in the summertime. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Years ago. Year, years ago. Uh, that was 3,000 years do you, ago. Do you mind if I tell Jesus a story? Jesus Christ was born right. when we met. He right? was there. And I remember when we first took our first drink of vampire blood and I looked at you and I said, mm, give me some more, please. You know what I mean? Like, that was a special day for us. I know. We were born, but but of... All jokes aside, yeah. we were in Rick's room, yep. uh, his, his library or whatever, and I was sitting, we were talking to uh, 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 Greg. That was, a, that was a cool party, too, because there cool was party. three people who lived on the same block. Who, That's right. Who it was, was a neighborhood block I knew, party. I knew a different person. I don't, I don't actually still know who Greg is. I was in his home. Oh, really? I slept in his bed. Um, <laughs> Greg, did you, if you're listening. Did you throw up in his bed? <laughs> no, 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 no. I took a poop. I would okay, never. Okay, I'm classier good. than that. I don't th- yeah, throw up in beds. Much cleaner. <laughs> yeah, much cleaner. exactly. It's very easy because I, I poop like a rabbit. Right. Um, <laughs> a little pellet. Like little tiny cute pebbles. And I did them like in a Mickey Mouse. So yes, it was very, it was very sweet, considerate. Yeah. And I know Brian. He lives on the other end of the block. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I came up to the house. Yes. And I see this fabulous woman working the entire room. And I go, who is this bien? Because I need to know her, and we're going to be friends forever. Yes. Yeah, and so then I think the first thing that I said to you was, we were talking about your wigs, you were like, you know, because you don't hide it, you're like, look, I wear fabulous wigs, what's there to hide? Exactly. And so then I said, well, you know what, Shannon, this is a wig, and I pretended like I was going to pull my hair off, and then after that, you had long you, hair, I had, I had, hair you had long back. shoulder, were you, long Was he like hair. Tom Cruise? Or something that he peeled off his yeah, face. Yeah, that's what it was. It was that yeah, very yeah, mission uh, Charlie, yeah. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Oh, 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 doing, oh yeah. something more mask. Sorry. Right, right. Mask. Yeah, yeah. So, Charlie's sorry. Uh, yeah, not Charlie's Angels. I'm just kidding. I'm like... You're manly. Like, you're manly. Su- you don't watch Charlie's Angels. I'm super manly. Yeah, you are. Like, I only wear my thongs on Fridays and Saturdays, you know? So... That just shows how the pink ones. I am, you know? The yeah, pink ones. thank you. <laughs> the pink ones on Friday they say, and the white ones on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. They say Friday and Saturday on them, so you know if I'm tricking, you know? <laughs> we are, oh, we're going to talk about trade, so we'll definitely talk about some trade. Right. Anyway, so I, um, I met Vincent at this party, and we just gloshed over each other. We we, we, we loved each other within yeah. two or three seconds. Yeah, yeah, it was right That's basically the most. I fell in love with you. Yeah. Very and nice. we come to find out after we've gushed over each other and talked about what we love about each other and we were saying that we were, each other, we were fabulous, mm-hmm. found out literally from that party that we were going to be in Europe. At the exact same time. The exact same time. Even more so, we were gonna be, you were going to be in Paris, and I had wanted to go to Paris, but I didn't have a set plan, so I said, okay, I'm just going to go whenever you're there. Yes. And we can hang out. And we, so we texted each other. Our, our that is love right Isn't there. That's it's, like I love at first sight. Who knew? I didn't know he was psycho. Why, why aren't you married? If he was crazy. Oh, no, I planned to kill you and, like, single white female you. <laughs> but then once we had that baguette across from the Notre Dame, I was just like, no, mommy, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> oh, my God. So we texted and emailed each other, each other's itinerary. We finally met. Um, yes, at the Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. You were, you so were there. Romantic. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it, we could have just like gotten on a boat and just like sailed Look, away. Honestly, mm-hmm. put your gayness aside yeah, and yeah. put your like, you know, straightness aside and, and get married. Okay. Yeah. Well, you want, yeah. I don't okay, want let's make it I think it's... By the time that we're 7,000 years old, if we don't have somebody, <laughs> you, okay, yeah. handshake right now. Handshake. You've got that uh, vampire blood, blood, blood in you anyway. Cut, or, yeah. We gotta cut our thumbs cut or our fingers or what are we gonna do? The hand right down the middle. Okay, then I'm marrying you very, in 7,000 years. Very Game of Thrones. Okay. Yeah. I'll be I'll be there. Yeah. Will you be Will you be there fishing on? I have fishing invented the earth, so I am the oldest here. So yeah. of course I'll be there. Dev, Devward yeah. will be there. Yeah, That's what I'm exactly. Call you since we... Dev, <laughs> Deadwood. Deadwood. Dev, Deadwood. <laughs> Evan Deadwood. You heard? You listened to the show? There we go. <laughs> So, I, his name. so you know what? By the way, do you remember that I was talking to? Of course, I was having a crowd about, amongst me before you met me at the cafe. Sure. I met the two ladies from Wisconsin. Yep. They're Green Bay Packer fans, just like me. Yep. And I met some other lady who knew uh, was talking to me. And then I was checking out that hot priest. Yeah. Yeah. He was gorgeous. He was in his what do you call his outfit? And he one of the priests. His gown or whatever. His gown, whatever you call it. Yeah. It's like, this is the Pope's outfit, but it's black. <laughs> Correct. Instead. It's okay, a priest. that. Yeah. And uh, the Notre Dame. The, yeah. the, he's, okay. he's, he's a cardinal. But or he was whatever. freaking hot. Yeah, yeah. 
You're and I'm time. taking pictures of him, and then the ladies were noticing I was taking pictures, so we were laughing and everything. And here comes Vicente. Mm -hmm. And then me and him toured the church, the cathedral. We took pictures, and we just had an amazing day. Yeah, I got you going to go on a train for the first time. She got me she, going on the subway, and I was nervous. Thing, we travel very differently, you know. Shannon likes to do, like, you know, bougie, you mm -hmm. know. She's I like, know. I'm fabulous. I'm in a hotel. I'm like, what is a hotel? <laughs> is that a hostel with an extra letter missing? I don't right. understand where you're staying, you know. I am a vagabond. I am a gypsy. See, that's uh -huh. how I like to you do things. Are. We're very different that way, but we also totally vibe because exactly. we're all about a good time. Exactly. You know, we're all about beautiful people. Yeah. We can connect, you know, even though our worlds, they seem like worlds apart, you know, like, but we're just, we're, we're also worlds overlapping. We are. You know. That whole day was amazing. We went to an Australian bar, an Australian pub. In Paris. I'm in Paris. Paris. Yeah. And, and I'm we originally went... from Minnesota, but, really? but I went to a Green Bay that's Packer right, bar. And that's I, right. I could be After kicked that, we went out to... of the state. <laughs> They're not right. going to welcome me back when I come back now. As no. soon as this we airs, found revoked. a Green Bay Packer bar in Paris. Because you're a Packer but, fan. Because I'm a Packer fan. The whole bar was full of, full of Green Bay Packer fans on a Sunday. I couldn't be more happier in my life. I'm in Paris, and I'm watching a Green Bay Packer oh. football game. There was a game going on that yes, day. Yes, it, so it was crazy. Perfect. Wine and cheese and Packers. Wine yeah. and cheese and Packers. And after that, do you remember, we went to a late dinner, mm -hmm. met some other people in this yeah, bar. And, and, and this guy was playing the piano for all night. He was amazing. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to bed until, like, what, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock that morning. Yeah, no. It was the most amazing, perfect yeah, day in Paris. Yeah, I just slept out, amazing. I outside the bar. You know, <laughs> just right there on the, right on there. the chair. Oh, you're like, I'm going to stay here for the night. Yeah, I woke up and somebody had put, like, a flower crown around yeah. me like this is paris you know yeah. like yeah. that's a true it's what the parisians fake do story. but you know what i have that memory with you and i cherish that memory thank Same. you so much for being there for me because i was there for i was there for myself until i met the group the, the group in uh, nice yeah yeah so and that. again you know we had that uh horrible tragedy that the notre dame was burning last week what are your thoughts about that by the way since we were there we we saw the whole thing was gorgeous what are your thoughts that what but the fire that happened i'm a big history person so i i do feel like it's it's terrible but yeah. i'm also really glad that on the episode that I just listened to, you referenced that it's really important that we don't lose sight of the reality of yeah. what happened. This mm -hmm. is one place, but in America here, we have three black churches that were bombed that nobody referenced. Fire, or nobody, or burned you know, on. You know, yeah, yeah, set, burned set up, fire. you know, and, and nobody referenced, nobody raised any money, nobody lifted a finger, but as soon as people draw that distinction between hundreds of millions of dollars coming out, hundreds then people are like, well, wait a minute. We got a lot going on here back home. Exactly. Like we got to remember, and it's not about this nationalist stuff. It's right. not just that we can always help, but there, there's nobody less fortunate there. You know, they got they they have, you know, some of the biggest brands in the world, some of the biggest wi wine, cheese. I mean, that place is got plenty of billionaires of and course. billionaires who and can take who care of those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's right. But for us, it's like this is person to person. That could have been your church. That could have been my family's church. Right. My grandma was a Baptist. You know, like. Oh, really? So it's like you know that's my my family's from Kansas City also. You know. So okay. It's like, there is that culture there. So you know, I know, I know the distinction that was being made there with the choices to to support rebuilding that church so that's my only thing history love it i want that place to continue on i want other people to see it the same way i did but let's keep it real mm -hmm. you know we, you don't need my money mm -hmm. you know you don't need their money these churches back here and that's i'm really right. glad to, that you had mentioned that and that you said look they raised like a million dollars or whatever it was you know that, well, that, at that, and that time was 1.3 million yeah. yeah and that's going to only go up you know yeah, as, exactly. as the story gets around because i noticed on facebook every time somebody saw that distinction was made like what was it a billion dollars overnight for the Notre overnight Dame, for the Notre overnight Dame. yeah but then for this for these three churches it's like we're not even on the news yeah. but everybody's it's... saying oh my heart was breaking you've never yeah. been there you've never been you'll never go <laughs> right and, and you don't even know and and they're posting <laughs> photos of yeah. it on facebook that some they've never people been still to. think like you yeah. said some people still think like this that my only reference is the cartoon the disney yeah. You know, like that's mm -hmm. that's all people know about Notre Dame. Oh they yeah, the like history. They, yeah, exactly. They're like, oh my God, Quasimodo now. You know, yeah, it's like exactly. He's not there. He's not. He's not really there. He's not really there. That wasn't. You're such a dork. A yeah, I get... <laughs> <laughs> More after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the best massage and facial at L'Hotel Arbib Salon in Los Angeles. You should get down there right away and try it out because it is the best. Please give her a call at 323-704-6886 or you can contact her at Latel Arbib on Instagram. Also, if you tell her that Queen Shan Shan sent you, you will get $25 off your first treatment. Hunt tea! Vicente, you mentioned... Uh... You were born in Minnesota. Born and raised. You're a Vikings fan. 
Of course. How dare you? Get the hell out of here. Okay, good to see you, girl. Thank you much for, so much for having me. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, girl, bye. bye, bye, girl, bye, girl, bye you're the stand-in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Okay. This is also, she's still mad about the wig from earlier. Awesome. Um, no, yeah, born and raised in Minnesota. Um, I, I, You know, but I also could absolutely care less about pro- professional sports. Okay. You know, like, my thing is that there are just so many more amazing you know, artists and musician and films and plays. Prince, and, hello. You know what I mean? Like, there's so much happening Jada around Jackson. you. You know, yeah. po- even politics. Like, caring about politics as opposed to understanding politics are two very oh. different things in, in this world that we live in. You know, you care because you know that that person's different from me and I don't like them. So I'm just going to repost a meme. There's so much more to understanding what the electoral college is. You know, what our budget should look like, what our tax structure should look like. And I'm not saying everybody take political science. I'm not a specialist. But in your state? But I make an effort to research. But do you think that state also uh, is more politically... Uh, knowledgeable in yeah, Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that's kind of consistent, and this is going to sound... In the Midwest? Yeah, I think... Well, I think blue states. You oh, know, okay. Like, I think that blue states, people take a little bit more time to, to focus in on what's going on, and they don't just... Um, jump in every cycle. You know, like my dad, as a little kid, I got brought to see Paul Wellstone, RIP. He was a great senator. He was a great advocate for change. You know, he was always very passionate about what, um, about making a difference in the communities that he worked in. You know, so as a little kid, listening to him speak was one of the greatest moments of my life. Wow. You know, so like understanding that that we care about the mayoral elections, we care about the, you know, the Congress people that represent us, the city council. You know, we know these things. I mean, and this could have just been my community or my upbringing. Mm. You know, I have plenty of friends who could care less, uh, uh, you know, aside from going to the bar and trapping and getting high and, you know, you know, baby mama, you know, drama. And, you know, I don't know why he thinks he's all that and everything. And he's on Facebook talking about I'm with this new bitch, you know, and I'm like, there's more to life than that. There's so much more to life than that, you know? Like, come live it with me, you know? Let's learn. Let's, how about with this? We, let's learn. I okay. can show you Let's actually you learn world. something? Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah. God. It is possible. It is possible. Okay, since we're talking about politics, i got to yeah, ask. Go ahead. Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar. Um, I, I don't know enough about her to make an opinion. I'm sorry, and, who is that? In my, she's, she's a, a Minnesota... Minnes- Senator? Congresswoman? Congresswoman? Yeah, Senator. Congressman or Senator? Senator? Which one? I don't know. Uh, maybe Senator. Wait, <laughs> if only we had a device to look I know, things up on. Be, yeah, we, we can uh, Google that. Say, uh, we, we, can, just, we can edit this part I out. I am not, yeah, I say, like, I will not. Senator. She's a senator from Minnesota, right? Um, and she, but I heard, the only thing that I heard about her was that when she was a district attorney, she was very, um, like, her record seemed racially motivated. Oh, okay. You know, like, that she was She's white? She she's white. Okay. She's a white woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, but. For me, I don't, and I said this in the beginning, I said, okay, coming into this next round, I've been a Bernie supporter from before, but I also was very happy to support Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Happy to, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that was a bad option or that was a second choice. Mm -hmm. This will catch a lot of flack from Bernie bros, but I also feel like that community is not as segregated as everybody makes us out to be. I'm still a Bernie fan. I think uh, Pete Buda Gugu is also (laughs) Buda 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 Baby Buda 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 Buddha, Buddha, Judge. Buddha, get your ass out of here. Um, I think that he, I think that he's a good option. You're such a dork. Uh, I don't know enough about him. You know, Buddha I think, Judge, I, Buddha I, Judge. You know, um, who? What's his name? Just jumped in the race today. Joe Biden. Biden. Joe Biden just jumped in the race. Mm-hmm. I also, I think is a good option. I'm not gonna trash other. We have other... another 15, 16 months. What? We right? Are we fifteen, sixteen? Yeah. Months well, somewhere? yeah. November. Well, I also of, think uh, that as liberals also... or progressives or whatever you identify yourself as, it is a waste of our time to to tear each other down or right. our candidates that we support. Yes, I support Bernie and I will do that unless somebody else is nominated to the ticket. Okay. That's the only that's Goodbye the it is. And that's the thing. I mean, if if it's somebody that I support that in the end that takes that takes it beat booty um booty, 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 booty get booty gotta get get it, get it um <laughs> then I'm down. You know, if it's if it's Kamala Harris, I'm down. You know? Right. Whoever right. you will support whoever wins. I will support. I don't think that we need to turn our back nomination. on people and say that right. this because any of those options are better than the current option we have now. Because that's 100%. a lot of the reasons 100%. why we're in that position now. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's there's a big difference. How did this become 
the the uh, the Matthews or the freaking CN panel all of a sudden. We just. I think just, it's just the fact that we care. We care. You know? like, <laughs> it's, and it's not. It's not a like, like blame anybody conversation. It's just like. Well, and I, I'm just curious what Amy Klobuchar is like because I hear she's a hard ass and yeah. nobody can work for her and she fires everyone. Yeah. So oh, I just really? was wondering if you. And that's the thing uh, is that so is when she, it comes uh, down to it, is she she put her her hat in the ring for the president. Yeah, she, yeah, oh, yeah. She's, oh, she did. She's oh, one of the twenty five thousand that are running. Yeah. The twenty five thousand president march is what they're calling. Um, they, she put her hand in the ring in the snow, like I'm a Minnesota girl, and I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. You know, and it's like, <laughs> exactly. yeah, no, it's I get it. You're from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're playing that real hard, girl. Like, mm-hmm. calm down. But you people know? really don't like her. No, I, I think she's got plenty of people who like her. Okay. I'm just saying, I, she's not my first choice. She's not my second choice. But if that woman is running on a ticket, she's got, I, she's got my vote. You know, really? because I think, I think that it's more. I think that. For me, and I'm and I'm very, I try to be informed, but I also feel like I have to be simplistic in the sense that white men have done more than enough good and damage to this country. So how about we give anybody else an opportunity, whether they're gay, trans, wh- women, you know, um, you know, different races. Obviously, we all deserve. Let me see a Native American president. You know, Hello. Just, I mean, come on, like this is the country we stole. You know, so it's like <laughs> right. That's a good idea. Honor that. Let's yeah. honor that. Let's let's get everybody in there. And then once we're done with every single group, you know, a trans, lesbian, black, uh, priestess, uh, Wicca, you know. <laughs> After oh. she's done, then we can have a white man have another chance at it. I know? agree with you. Let's just go, let's I, I go would there love and see what see. happens. We'll and have that, Stevie Nicks as the presidential nominee pretty soon. Right. Why not? Exactly. Why not? Go. There we go. Why not? Let's let her run, you know? Like, that's what I'm saying. Let's get a white woman in there first. How do we miss that? How do we just skip over and we went black man first? The way this country always breaks down is white men get to do it, then white women, then black men, then black women, then the rest of us get a chance every once in a while. Muchas gracias. Para ayudar. Um, thanks for your help. Well, you know, like, and then we get to the gays eventually, and then trans is on the back end of that. I mean, we all know how this country works. Obviously. You know, like, let's, let's yeah. some truth yeah. tea that in is these all last the last two minutes. Let's that just, is so let's true. Be real. Give everybody a chance to be terrible at the job. Obama was not. The greatest president of all sure time. Wasn't. I think he did some great stuff, but I also know his garbage record. And that, that file uh-huh. is mm-hmm. large bombings sure, and you know, like wars and everything. I mean, you know, he did the best that he could for that situation, but he also was hugging up with the bank people, put the same bank people in charge that screwed us over in 2008. You know, I'm not stupid. If you watch, if you pay attention, there is a lot that happened during his presidency that was shady as fear. <laughs> But at the same time, he made a lot of great steps, and I'm happy to see a, a black man in that office. And I can't wait till it's a brown man, until and, and I'm not gonna say yellow man because that's just I don't know where we got to that. Point. I don't like, either. You know what I mean? Like, why right, until a red man? Like, what is that? Oh, you no. know, like the, the hands across the nations. We don't have to be different. Everybody's kind of a brown, a shade of brown. Okay. You know, we're all over brown. Even white people are more pink than anything. Right. Okay. You know, like True. it's not Look really. Look at my face. Yeah, see, <laughs> it's pink. And they're getting injections now. They want to get the you know tan injections right. now. You know, so right. come on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, that is so much. We've already already spanned the globe of the political. Uh, <laughs> Uh, arena with you you again <laughs> i just said you're born in minnesota and we got all that uh can we get into some tea you ran away from home yeah um when you were 13 years old yeah so t- circle it back i'm from minnesota but we visited california because i have family out here and when i was 13 i got it in my head that this is where i needed to be because i always wanted to be a performer so at 13 i you know called continental airlines no longer at around. 13 years mm-hmm. old i called there i made up these voices i was using excuses i said well i'm traveling with a person <laughs> he's not the age of the person to travel by himself but he's coming by to the airport by himself so i kept <laughs> changing up my story because i got nervous you know i'm not gonna you're like agador sparta it's, <laughs> <big, laughs> it's a big it's a big commitment to actually run away as opposed to being like i've packed my bags mother i'm leaving you know it's like you're not going anywhere go downstairs and wash up and get your ass back upstairs because we're having sopa okay uh-huh all right my, mommy sorry um but yeah so anyway so i I did this whole thing. I stole their, my parents' checkbook. I took, my, I took my brother's CD player because I'm gonna need that on my trip, obviously. Obviously. Um, I took all of his Tupacs and 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 Snoop Dogs because my parents wouldn't let me listen to it yet. You know, like I I had to get like Party to Go MTV <laughs> number thirteen. You know. Um, this is music. Yeah, right. Exactly. This is music. Um. So yeah. So anyways, I I took my dad's cell phone, like you know, big Motorola, the flip one that with the antenna that came out the top. You know, where you look like you were you know radioing in Vietnam, like Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> Yes. Get over here, Charlie. You know, it's like, you know, no, that's not. But you're walking around with it. You're sure walking are. around. So anyway, so I, I get to the airport. 
I'm telling the taxi driver, you know, he's like, man, it's crazy. A kid like you is going by himself to, you know, I'm on this trip. I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to be an actor. So I've got a very prestigious school that I'm going to. In my head, I'm already a liar. You know, You're I'm already lying I'm off the scammer. cuff. I'm a scammer. I'm a liar. I'm a transient. This is what I do. You're kind of like Andrew Cunana right now. You know, I'm like, that's, oh, that's kind of right, like, huh? Yeah. yeah. What's it? What's it, Andrew Cunana? <laughs> Is that, is that the thing that's going around LA right now? Oh no, that's measles. Because people don't vaccinate their kids. Andrew Cunanan murdered uh, Johnny Versace. Yes, he's like, oh, did you okay. not see that? You didn't see the. Yeah, I saw the first episode, but I didn't get his name. I just knew that. That's, that's funny, movie. but you're like, you're kind of like giving off some Andrew Cunanan like. Yeah, because that's right? where he lived. He was, he was you a look true artist. Like right, he was right, like, right. oh, right, right. right? You're gonna say the sensei looks like Andrew Cunanan? A little bit. But thank you, thank you so much. I know it's a compliment, babe. Well, I mean, he was played <laughs> by the kid from Glee, and that kid's hair. Right, Darren Chris, right? I don't know about the real guy. The real guy was Psycho. He killed six people. Did he, how many people did he kill? At least that. Okay. Yeah, he's a serial killer. I'm not going to confirm nor deny, but you will never find the bodies. Okay? <laughs> That's the difference between me and Andrew Cunan, and I'm doing air quotes right now, because you will never find the bodies of my victims. Never. Um, but anyways, so, he, so hey, I'm on the plane. And he found a boy in, in Minnesota, too. Remember, he slayed the two people in Minnesota. Oh, my God. He was awful. He was awful that sounds guy. terrible. I'll look him up. Yeah, 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 anyway. But watch the series on FX. I have to. I have to. So anyways. So anyway, anyway. So I get to the airport, and I tell the guy, I said, look, my mom is sick, and she's pregnant, and she can't come in with me, so can you fill out this check? She said that you would, you know, and I forged the check, and I gave it this to him. This is obviously pre-9-11. Pre-9-11, right? Because still... the checks and balances are just Oh, yeah, no, totally. Right and you know what he did? He called the bank just to make sure the money was there. Like, oh, yeah, make sure the money's there, wow. but don't call the parents. There's two people listed on that check, you fool. He got fired, you know, afterwards, obviously. But um, but yeah. So then I get I get through security and I get stopped because I got a cell phone and a CD player and you know I basically like a robbed electronics store. You know, like was there <laughs> looting today? Did somebody loot earlier today? So I told him I said, oh, you know, it's because I'm moving. I'm going to LA to an acting school. Good <laughs> luck, just, good luck, kid. Go at get him. Thirteen years yeah, old. Thirteen. In and out. I get to the the gate. They get me on the flight. You know, talking to these ladies and they're like, you know, sitting next to me. These two big ladies and you know, they got the Minnesota accent. Oh my God, that's so exciting that you're moving to California. I have always <laughs> wanted to go there. That sounds like so much fun. I am so excited for you. Do you want something to drink? Hey, can we get him a soda? Uh, uh, what do they call it? Oh, uh, can we get him a pop over here? Can we get him a, a soda pop? You know, pop. Yeah. What a sweetheart. Get some pop over here. So they they really sweet to me. I get off in Texas because I'm changing like three times. Like continental, Texas, the hub, continental, Houston, Texas, you know, yeah. Texas, then Phoenix, then L. A. Oh my so my gosh. whole plan, having not communicated, number one, I didn't leave a note to my parents. <gasps> number two, I didn't communicate to my cousins that I was coming. I was planning on getting off at of LAX by myself and making my way there. I had no numbers, no way to communicate to them, nothing. I know. I think about it now, and I'm like, that's. That's insane. Nuts. At 13. 13. At so I get to Texas and I figure, you know what? Let me call my mom and just see what's going on at home. You know? So She's I pull out freaking this, out. Vicente. She's got the police. My godfather was one of the oh sergeants in the police god, department. Oh my god, your poor mother. So your she, poor she's mother. got the police at the bus stations, the train stations. Oh it looks like the window is taking out the screen, you know? And and because in Minnesota, everybody has basements. So I lived in the basement, you know, refurbished basement. And I climbed out through that way, you know? And so it looked like somebody just kicked the screen in. And then just grabbed me and left, you know, like it looked like <laughs> a, a kidnapped. I do feel oh bad my for God. her. My bad, Mama. I can't believe yeah. it's your mom. Mama. Like, like Jean Benet style. You know I love you. <laughs> you know I love you. Um, no, yeah. So, anyways, I go. So then, fast forward. I'm I'm in Texas. I'm calling mom. Hi, hey, how you doing? Oh my God! Where are you? What happened? Where are you here? Where are you here? Mom, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm actually moving to L.A. So I will be talking to you soon. You know, you're kidding me. You get your ass back here. You know, it's like, look, woman, don't, don't mess with me because I'm on my own right now and nobody knows who I am. So, you know, I could have just hopped on my next plane, but she talked to me for a while. I held her at ransom. I said, you move me to L.A. or I'm not coming back. She goes, okay, anything you want, anything, just give me back my son. You know, it was like she was talking to the kidnappers, but I was both. Somehow. Oh my God. That's I was amazing. the kidnapped and the kidnapper. So she goes, <laughs> she goes, I, she goes, give the phone to somebody. I give it to this lady, you know, and this is like, you know, obviously Texas country, uh -huh. you know, Southern. And she's got like a braided beehive that goes like all to the way the up sky. to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's hilarious. Oh, and she, I go, here, my mom was talking to you. She goes, huh? Hello? Oh my God. Oh my God, ma'am. 
Oh, you are so bad. I cannot <laughs> believe. Oh, you are bad. Ma'am, I am so sorry. No, we will take care of this right away. Don't you worry about a thing. And so then they had the security come over. They put me in this room and they had like snacks and sodas and, and movies and everything. And I was like taking my shoes off, put my feet up, you know, getting comfortable. And I was like, excuse me, Garcon, what's the entree this evening? You know, like just taking it on. You're full on 13. Loving, Loving it. it. I felt like it was my own little home alone. You were home alone. Yeah, I was. You were I was. definitely home alone. home alone New York vacation. But it, and somehow I ended up in Texas. Whoa. Uh. So, so anyways, I came back home. And Deb, I uh, hey, Deb I'm Lebanon. from Texas. Dead Edward. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Edward. Austin. Austin is great. <laughs> <laughs> Austin's terrible. <laughs> and everybody. And then the the podcast. The podcast shut down. Down. <laughs> shut down. Thanks. I, went, I went to school. Thanks, in Austin, guys. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> So what, what happened next? So I was so I was destined for LA. You know, like this was always the plan. It was a long term thing, but it's so much easier to talk about your dreams and to and to plan for your dreams and to not actually go after your dreams. So you know, I went down my roads. You know, trouble with the police. You know, I tried to do a little hood rat business for a while. Did you really? And then yeah, and then I came out of that and ended up working on a cruise ship for a while. And that really opened my eyes to the rest of the world. How were you? How old were you when you were working on a cruise ship? Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty two. And know? how long? So, did, how, how many years was that? Oh no, just a couple months. Oh, okay. It was a couple okay. months, and then uh, unfortunately, I was um, asked to leave because because uh, <laughs> I always find a way. I was just telling a friend, I just quit a job for the first time <laughs> in my entire life. Because I, I always get fired. You always get fired. I always stay long enough I mean, to get fired. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna spill some tea, but you know what? A word from our sponsors. Queen Chan Chan, I hear you have a date tonight. Why, yes, I do. And we're actually looking for a place to eat for dinner tonight. Any suggestions? Yes, I know the perfect place. Ma's Italian Kitchen. Great idea. They have an amazing seared salmon plate, grilled New York steak, and also baked chicken parmigiana. Mmm. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you. You know what? I gotta tell them Queen Chan Chan sent me. Hunty! Okay, so you found yourself after the the cruise ships. You also did a, you loved working in the camps for kids, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. And then you went to film school. Yeah. Why yep. did you go into film school? Yeah. So that's when I got to LA and I started auditioning and kind of checking out the scene. I just felt like there were so many concepts that I wanted to create. You know, like I just I didn't realize how valuable it was to. Or how much, how, how meaningful it would be to bring your own concepts to life, you know? It wasn't just about, like, well, if nobody were hire me, then I'll hire myself because I'm always on time, you know? <laughs> but it was just a fact of, like, I, I actually have some good ideas, you know? And I, and I, there was nothing more touching than seeing my screen, my uh, short film shown for my entire community in a film festival. You know, we were the only uh, film that sold out at the film well, festival because it was in St. Paul where, they had, it where I grew up. What's it called? It's called oh, Kiddo. Right. It's and why kiddo. did you name the, the film Kiddo? My grandpa used to call me that. My grandpa's passed away, you know, but he was like 98, you know, so he had a real long, amazing life. You know, he, he uh, used to sing with Frank Sinatra. He played wow. he played uh, Major League Baseball when he was 17, you know? like wow. he, what, he, what, for he, the Minnesota Twins? No, no, he played uh, for the Kansas City Monarchs, which was like, I think, in the Negro Leagues at the time. Wow. But he, why did your grandpa, was your Mexicans grandpa? were treated the same way. Like, my parents used what? to tell me, yeah, my parent, my dad used to tell me, like, when they would go to the local pool, when they would visit their cousins in Kansas, that they would have to swim in the black pool and that they couldn't swim in the white so pool. So Mexicans had, swim, had, Mexicans were, you know, treated yeah, like black people, people of color yeah exactly people of color. Mm-hmm. Isn't that awful? Yeah, it's crazy it's crazy to think about that is, that crazy. is insane i had nothing to do with that yes yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i was in texas and you, you know us we're super liberal <laughs> 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 we were writing we were writing cowboys oh, I mean, we were writing God. horses oh, and God. and we weren't doing anything wrong. <laughs> deers and what so <laughs> Played with the Negro yeah, League. so he had, he, his whole experience, like, he got honored by the Minnesota Twins when he was in his 90s as, wow. like, you know, a pioneer. But they kicked him out because he was 17. He he lied about his age. Mm. Interesting know, he, where he, that comes he from. He was in the war. Yeah, exactly. Right, You know where I get my hustle from. Okay. Like, old school. You know? Obviously. He, he sang in, in World War II. You know, he didn't he didn't fight. He was, like, singer. He was a singer for the troops, you know? Yeah. Like, so he was in the service. But, so anyways, my, my, um, my, my, Entertainment background goes back very far. It's you know my dad went to school for radio. You know like he ended up doing other work, but I was just like I got to get out here. Once I started going to film school, it was like full speed ahead. You I went got, to film school right here. I went to LACC. Oh good. I got um 
I got the idea because I met my little cousin as soon as I got here. My my uncle passed away, and uh, my grandpa's brother. And so I went to the funeral and met my entire California family for the first time since I was like eight and wow. came to visit. Wow. So while I was there, I met this precocious little 10-year-old cousin of mine. And she was like, you know, I, that's cool that you came here for acting. Like, I think I'll be on Disney Channel or something like that. Like, she was so <laughs> cute. You know, just one of those little kids that spend a lot of time with adults. So she, you know, is really pumped up. And I was like, I'm going to write something for us to be together in. And she's like, oh, you write. And I was like, no. No, I don't. But I'm going to learn how to write. So I took <laughs> all the classes that I needed. And this kiddo thing just came out of nowhere. Basically, it's about a, a, a little girl who's sent to live with her estranged uncle after her dad commits suicide. Um, I've had a lot of uh, dealings with suicide over the last few years. A lot of friends of mine that have taken their own lives. Mm. And so the thing is, is it seems like there's nothing else after that point. And you sometimes people's fear of like that contagious suicide, you know, with kids and stuff like that. But it's true for adults, too. And especially within the gay community, like the, the majority of friends that I've lost to suicide have been in the gay community. Wow. The people who seem who are seemingly happy who are successful, who are all these things. And it's like, but there's this self-hate, you know, and you see this escape, you see this this avenue out. So what I kind of wanted to show was people continue in their lives after the fact. Mm -hmm. So it's really the story of this little girl who needs somebody and this guy who actually, this girl man who needs somebody. Mm -hmm. And I play the, the uncle. And um, your precocious and I'm, little niece. And the precocious they were, little niece is actually my little cousin, a, you know. Okay. So she, so we did this together, you know. And I, I wrote parts for people that I met throughout the years, like through auditions. I met people, you know. I, I wrote them in, you know. Met people to shoot it. Met, you know. So it was very, That's very awesome. connective and collaborative. Yeah, and we, we went on to. Um, get into a few film festivals. We won a couple of awards in our categories. You know, it's great. yeah, it was it's great. Really it was fun. really an awesome experience. I went to New York for the film festival there and got to share that with friends. Went to St. Paul for the film festival there. My whole family was there. You know, wonderful. And one of the best. Um, like uh, takeaways was a group of friends these girls were kind of like the bitches in school but they were friends of mine because I was funny so I was never like bullied or anything but mm -hmm. they were they said oh we went to dinner and we were trying to talk about like how we were going to lie to you and tell you that it was good even if it wasn't oh. and I was like Okay, I'm not surprised. You were bitches back then. You're still bitches. Still that way. Um, but yeah, then the response was, but we didn't have to lie to you, so that was really nice. And it was like, <laughs> right? okay, that actually means more than my aunt coming up to me like, I loved it, give me kisses, you know? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, there was, you would have said that if I would have made like a paper plane, you know, like, and just flew it. Like, you'd have been like, hey, that I was love, amazing. Best thing ever. You're the best paper plane maker. You know, uh -huh. it's like, Thea, I love yeah. you, but... I don't trust your judgment. Right. You love me. Right. But are you are you looking into what's happening here? And that's the thing. A lot of the feedback that I got was very genuine. It was like, this is really good because of this reason, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I'm all comedy, but I made a drama because I wanted to challenge that's myself. That's interesting. That's so funny because Haley, who was uh, on the show a couple weeks ago, she is, uh, she's, she wants to be more of a drama actress. She's, a drama... Yeah, she does. She finds herself being more funny in life. But yeah. She leans she's very towards... funny in life, obviously. She's a very sweet girl. Yeah. But she finds more comfortability as being an, a dramatic actress. And mm -hmm. she says she wants to tackle on comedy. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that she said that she didn't have a lot of you know, death or sadness in her youth or mm -hmm. her, her growing up. But she relates to it more. But you, and it's funny, and you're the most funniest guy I know. And mm -hmm. then you had a drama film that you made. Yeah. So that's um, an interesting interesting dichotomy there. Well, yeah, and I think that the the challenge was in was in separating myself from my comedy so my that's my natural reaction i'm uncomfortable comedy i'm in a good yeah. mood comedy i'm sad <laughs> comedy you know it's yeah. like you i that's how i'm comfortable but the drama was a take was a, a departure from that completely you it's know? a good way to work, work out your demons you for know? sure for, for sure, sure. Yeah. and that's the thing is i've got heavy shit that i've gone through my life and i and i don't deal with it because I'd rather go to the comedy side of it. So, right. you know, my film is 20 minutes long and it's on Vimeo, so you can catch it. You Spell know, that, on please. V I M E O. Is Vimeo. that so? If I go on Vimeo.com, yeah. I can rent or buy your film right now? Yep, rent okay, or buy wonderful. it. It's, uh, it's like two bucks if you want to rent it and you get it for like 72 hours. Nice. Um, or if you want to download it and keep it forever, um, then it's five bucks, you know? So it's a small. It's a smidget, you know, I don't think it's it's crazy. And people were like, oh, just put it on YouTube, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, I could I could do it for free, but I invested a lot of my own. Yeah, right. you gotta you know, get like some of that, recoup of it. It, some of that money. That's so true. Yeah, and, I, mm -hmm. and, and people have hit me up forever. I wanna see it, I wanna see it. I mean, it's not a huge ask, you know, like, right. especially for somebody, you're supporting local business, you know, like yeah. that's really what it is, you know. I'm trying to continue to produce, continue to write. Let's hear a little cutaway from your movie, Kiddo. 
Why didn't you keep Gabby after Jason died? It's none of your business, and I'm not going to answer any questions you have. Now get the hell off my porch. <laughs> what? You still have issue with me? You kicked me out after my father's funeral. You are lucky that I kept a roof over your head as long as I did. Look, I couldn't help who my mother and father were, and Gabby sure as hell can't either. Oh, your father, he made his choice. With your no speaking to English whore of a mother. Don't talk about my mother Yeah, that and then way. for Gabby, who the hell knows what that is? I don't even know why I came here. Yeah, why did you come here? Because she needs somebody. She grew up in this house. How can you turn your back on your family that way? Jason was my stepson. They both lived here rent-free while he worked out his demons. I paid my dues. Vicente, you wrote and directed this film. How do we get uh, how do we get to watch it again? Yeah, so you go to Vimeo.com um, backslash on demand backslash kiddo. And there's a lot of other short films on there. Um, you know, there's a lot of projects that are up there. People don't know that it's a great place to find short films. I mean, our attention spans are so yeah, small now, so why true. not? Why not yeah. check out short films? Well, you know, I'm definitely going films. to link it into the liner notes for the podcast Thank and you. put it on the website and the newsletter. Awesome. So people can find it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, Vicente, what are you up to now? You know, I took a position with this production company. I've been freelancing in production of uh, film, um, not film, but uh, photo shoots, fashion photography and that kind of stuff, Got branded it. stuff. Um, and so I've been doing that for about the last two years. I took a position with them full time, and I found myself feeling disconnected from my original goal. If I mm -hmm. wanted to work a job whatever kind of job in any industry, which is what I've done for the last few years, I could go back to Minnesota and be with my family. You know, I didn't have to leave everybody that I know. Right. But I came here for film and acting. That is my new priority. So I walked away from this awesome opportunity and I'm just going to auditions. I'm, you know, I'm delivering Postmates on my bicycle. <laughs> I'm doing background work. Like, like you said, I'm a jack of all trades. I will do what I need to do, not just to survive, but to, to follow Can, this uh, goal and this dream. I want to I want to talk about that real quick. Um, I've only known you for three years, and since I've known you, you have had eight million jobs. <laughs> okay, I mean, no, you, uh, I've known you. You used to be a chef at Earth Cafe. Mm -hmm. You you it was a what was a exact pastry chef? What was it? No no no. I was a uh, uh, operations man. Oper I'm sorry, yeah, operations. Yeah. But you did cook. Yeah obviously. yeah yeah yeah. I had to learn how to cook every single thing on, right. the, on the menu. Yeah. Uh, you were uh, uh, in the, you know like I said production coordinator. You're an actor. You're a director. You're a writer. You were uh, you did po you do Postmates. You, mm -hmm. you uh, I'm working at a summer camp this summer. You worked, you worked at a summer mm -hmm. camp. Oh, doing it again this summer as I'm well? doing it again this summer. Because I did it last it. summer. I loved it so much. You loved it so much from last summer. It was the game changer, though. You know, like, coming out of, of you know, being in this kind of mode of, like, I just work, and I just, that, and then I go out, and then I travel, and that, you know, I didn't really stop to think about what I came here for. And it was seeing those kids, because it's for act, young actors. Oh, you it's an do, actor's camp? You can do fashion camp. You can do actor camp. You can do LARP, which, do you know what LARP is? It's live action role play. So it's uh, the kids. What? They make... They make swords and they put on costumes and they fight each other and there's missions and Fun. there's there's storytelling and it's like they're um, without saying this in a derogatory way they're the nerdiest kids but they're so freaking cool like it's the funnest group to be with and like once a week my camp name is Volcano so once a week the sorceress Volcano will come down and cast a spell over all the kids and then they'll have to fight me off and I'm just like rah you know like and it's. <laughs> It's a blast, and I love working Sounds with kids. Fun. Let's say, you know, in in uh -huh. fifty years, you know, hundred years, whenever, if my acting career hasn't, my acting screenwriting whatever career hasn't taken off, I would work with kids and be very, very happy and content doing it. You loved it, but for the time being, I would like to take advantage of my somewhat youth. And, and your pursue, activity, because you know? you're active and you want to yeah. be, you know, you're very creative and you're yeah. teaching children to be creative and, and, and expressive. Um, uh, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Have but you ever done stand-up? Yeah, I did when I first got here. And so I actually am going to do, um, there is an open mic at the Lexington in downtown Um and yeah. you guys let us know when we yes. would love i would i would totally watch you like yeah stand thanks up. i actually decided to get back into it because i saw a friend from the camp who invited me to come see him because you have like, a robin williams thing going on I okay too. can i can i spread some secret here go ahead that go ahead. i didn't know yeah. about edward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. edward on his 50th birthday wants to do a one-man show awesome right i do 
Oh, like maybe and, you guys can collaborate. And it doesn't come out of nowhere because it's I come from the background of theater and like music yeah. and all of that stuff. You too. Know, uh -huh. what, what, if, so, if you don't know a concept yet, you don't know the story, whatever. I I, I mean I, I shouldn't talk about it on mic, but I'll talk about it on mic because I'm not I don't have it fully fleshed out. But no, no, but you like, don't, but it's like a it's it'll be my fiftieth birthday, so it's just a basically a journey through my life. Yeah. And it's me giving back to the people that influenced me. Yeah, over all over the years, you know. Yeah. So I want to have my friends and family there, and yeah. you know, bosses, and you know, all, all all the all the people that are near and dear to me. Yeah. If you want any kind of yeah. you know collaboration or support on that, I mean, honestly, even if it's just like listening to and, and bouncing ideas off, yeah. I would be happy to. Like Thank you. working with this. Not to say that you're a kid, but working with kids also gives you kind of this nurturing nature that I feel like is not very consistent with Hollywood culture. Right. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't feel competitive towards other people, mm -hmm. and I also don't care if right. everything works out. You know, right. for me, it's like I've still got this whole family that I've built out here. You know, like this whole life that I've built out here, and these other commitments that make me really happy that that make me no money, and that and that serve no real purpose. Then why I mean, do you do it? And that's the thing. I mean, I'm I'm diving in full force now, and this is my my motivation. You know, and I'm going back to camp because I freaking love it. But after I get back, it's like it's all it's all acting, it's all screenwriting, it's all I'm writing constantly. I got a new concept that I'm going to be putting out real soon. It's um it's a a story about a Michael Jackson impersonator who falls on his tip jar and Million Dollar Baby's his neck, and so he can't get his moves back. Oh, and so damn. then he's got. He's gotcha. Get his mood back, down. And so, you know, this is this is me getting back into my comedy. It, that is a uh, WGA registered. <laughs> don't, don't try to steal no, this. No one better ever don't steal this story. idea because how original is that? Yeah, I mean, I've already got a shot. You know, it's just a matter of putting in music. We've got to do some original music. I've got a great friend, Ethan, who is a fantastic musician, who's going to help me with that. Ethan, you've met. Oh, Ethan I know and Ethan. Louis. Yeah. Ethan and Louis are friends of mine. Who Ethan has a full studio at his house. He does, you know. If any kind of musical work, he'd be another good person to talk to. You know, he's worked in in um, in the industry, and he worked. He did like he does amazing graphic design, and did like he was. Each Whole Foods has a personal graphic design artist on hand. Oh wow! And that's what he did that's for many he, years. Oh wow! And it's just right. like it's insane. So he's got a great eye. For yeah, he's got a great design. eye. He's got a, you know incredible musical taste. Like. But yeah. So, anyways, well, I, thank you for that offer. I may, yeah. may have to take you up on that. And, I, and, and like and, and, two Latino boys like producing my show, Danny and, oh. and Vicente. There you go. Okay, there you right. Go. Yeah. Yeah. We are behind. We are the biggest motivators of commerce in in this country now. Right. Sure. Are. So I'll, you know, yeah. it's, it might as well make it in the arts and everything yeah. else. You know. Yeah. Andale, andale. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, just totally off subject. Mm -hmm. You became a vegan. I did. I did. Yeah, I have that I have that moniker now that just like makes you not welcome in everybody's home because I'm a bisexual, atheist, vegan, cyclist. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like what else can you add? What to, else? Oh, are you are you trying to make your life harder? Is right. that what you are just like what what yeah. else can make my what? life harder? <laughs> I'm a wizard also. I'm a wizard as well. You know, I'm from the wizarding world of Harry Queen Potter. Oh my God. I, I, it, that's why I just love you so much because you really don't give a big fat F about mm. how people look at you, Vicente. Um, you are such a jewel in my life, um, and I've no—it feels like I've known you for fifty thousand years, and just I've only known you for three. I know you are know. such a surprise. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned you're bisexual. Yeah. Uh, you love the penis and you love the vagina. Yeah. Um, Down for both. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were just talking earlier, just like tag them, put them on both, and then I'm down, you know? Right, right. So tran trans so, need apply. You yeah. know what I mean? They say like, no fats, no femmes, no trans. I'll take all the fats. I'll take all the femmes. Asians welcome. I do not dis I do not discriminate. You do not discriminate. That is my platform as I throw my hat in the ring for the 25,000 president march. Vicente Luna, vote for me November 2nd. Whatever year we're voting, I don't know. This is a man that me. ran away at the age of 13 right? from Minnesota. You can trust he me. He knew what he wanted very I, early. I have hustled airlines, people, government. But that's when the, <laughs> now that's when the, that's when the Republicans are going to come after you and said, you know that he, he ran away at age 13 and he and lied saying, to his and mother. I, I never hide that. I never hide it. <laughs> right. Right. Not you like the weed? It just sucks. Okay. You know, legalize. <laughs> legalize today. You know? Do I support trans rights? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Combat? What do you want to do? What do you want to do right now? You want to be a, a construction worker? Go, go. Go, go Shim. Get it. Go, get you know? it. Go, Shim. Get it. I'm down. Okay, so, uh, but you're, do, do you, okay, so you, I'm going to give you an illustration. You have 50 plates of dicks and 50 plates of vaginas. 
What do you prefer? 25 and 25. <laughs> <laughs> People are always trying to like, like, uh, corral me into a zone where it makes sure. sense to them. And I'm like, no, honestly, like it is hit or miss. Men are easy though. So Ooh, like people, will say, so, people will so say, much easier. You know right? what I mean? Like, oh my people god! People will say like, oh, but you like guys because you go to gay bars and you have all these gay friends and that. That only happened when I moved to LA. My whole plan was to play it in the closet to mm-hmm. get my acting career off the ground. Really? Because of stigma associated with being gay and everything. And when you're bi, it doesn't matter. You're gay. People say that sure, all the time. You're gay. You fall into gay. That's that's all you are. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, look, women are hard, and I actually don't have the time to do all it's that. It's a lot you of know? work. It's a, I gotta take you out to dinner. It's a lot of work. When I walk into a bar, I just grab a guy's dick, yeah, and that's it. And you're you know? done. And you're done. done for the night. Come on, come you with got, me, and I'm, I'm and pulling you, like a leash. And you know, just his dick. grab another one if you want. Yeah, yeah. And also, you you come here too. Let me kiss yeah. you real quick. Yeah. Oh, I didn't like that so much. Yeah. You know, you can back back. You can go back over it's there. It's the truth. And that's the thing. Guys are easy. So yeah, I've hooked up with way more guys. But if the right person comes along, and I always say person, whatever that looks like. Oh, my goodness. I, you know, it's it's going to be a guy or a girl or somewhere in between. You know, I'm down. You're you down. Know? I'm whatever. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm, how does your family feel about this? Well, I mean, it's not the easiest thing. You know, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, my parents are Catholic, you know, Mexican, you know. So it's like I, there's this new short film called uh, Pozole, which is a Mexican uh, soup kind mm-hmm. of dish. Mm-hmm. And it's all about this girl, and she's, you know, biracial. You know, and I am too. My dad's, uh, my grandma was white, you know, one of my grandmas. Um, so that's another thing, you know. It's like, I don't speak Spanish, you know, and this is Do about, you speak any Spanish a little bit? No, I mean, you know, like, yo hablo, like, poquito, but pero, like, no entiendo mucho, you know. I know, and, you said, you said, <laughs> you said little, very, very little. <laughs> and I don't understand I don't a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I know more my, Spanish than you. My Mexican accent is on point, though, you know, like, if you ask me to talk into, well, how do I use in the Facebook? Hey, this is what they don't say Facebook. They say Facebook. Facebook. I do a listen, I, I put it on the Facebook. Oh, I'm so happy because I have a new heels and a new weaves. You know, this will be true if you are a Mexicana. Totally you know? Agador Spartacus. <laughs> so so Agador Spartacus. That's the thing. I used to do that to the people that I work with at Earth. I used to talk back to them. They would yell at me and be like, um, Vicente. Where is the chua? I need him for the recipe. I say, I don't know where the chua is. You know, it's like, if you're going to yell at me in your accent, I'm going to yell at you right back. And, you know? and you oh got to deal God. with that, honey. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's okay, hilarious. so uh, uh, your mom and dad, did, did, did you know, you, you ran away from home. You got back off. You back home, whatever. And you yeah. had a re- you got your education. You got schooling, whatever. Yeah. Uh, does your mom have an issue with you not... Vincente, why aren't you married? You're a good boy. Because your, your brothers are married. Uh, bo- both of your brothers are married. Two of my right? brothers are married, but I have a younger brother who's not. There's okay. four of us all together. All now, four boys. Yeah, all four boys. Okay. Yeah, which is the best because she's, you know, she's finding out now my sister-in-laws, their interactions with my mom have always been rough. Ooh. A little bit rough, you know? And it's like, now she sees, she goes, oh, I just want you guys to meet a nice Mexican girl. And like, you guys, I would give her an accent, but she doesn't have one. She's from Kansas, so she actually sounds more country than anything. <laughs> when we get, we like, we'll pass the state line into Kansas, driving in, and she'll just go, oh, boy, look at that cow over there. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, she has wait an accent. Minute, wait a minute. You were just in Minnesota talking about, what time are you going to the Walmart, Peg? <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, Peg. <laughs> Can I meet you at the Walmart or no? You tell me right now. <laughs> but right. all of a sudden, the minute she steps in the second, she mind. gets in the bus. She goes, "Ooh, give me a Budweiser, Uncle George." <laughs> My uncle's actual name is George. He does sound country though. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, the hardest thing I feel like is is you know for a period of time. You know, they've they've lived it. They know how I am. They're picking me up from jail or they're picking me up off the floor. You know, I've always been a reckless kind of wild child. How I've, many times have you been in jail? Just a few times. Just a few. I mean, it's, we don't have to go. If you want to research You're it, you are know, never going to be president. You're never going to be president. <laughs> uh, it's, excuse me. I am being uh, honest. About... You're never going to be president of the United okay, States. Okay, well, then I'll be vice president. Whatever. That's who Okay, maybe vice anyway. president. I'll be vice president. But how many times do you think you've been arrested, seriously? I mean, okay, somewhere in the range of five to ten, but Woo. but then on the lower end of five to two would be like actual, <laughs> like an arrest, arrest. You know, it's like you've been in handcuffs, you know, like when you go out and something pops I've up. I've never, no, I don't know, you know, because I've never been arrested or in handcuffs. Well, maybe not voluntarily, but. Uh... I mean, you're black, though. <laughs> I just don't understand how you made it this long, you know, like. <laughs> 
Again, like, you're I'm gonna cut your balls off for saying that. Uh, you're a grown black woman, like I mean, I've never been in jail. Yeah, just, F you, Vincent. Not even like I had like, nothing you were, to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> that you weren't even like mouthing off to the cop when you got pulled over, and, like put you in cuffs, and, like putting you in the back seat. And you no, like, I'm calling your manager, and then he let you out. Like not even that. <laughs> My God, girl. She's like whiter this, than me. I'm whiter than, than ever. Honestly. Dead this is, Devlin. This is, this is um, I, I, you know, that's my friends call me the whitest black girl ever. Yeah. I, I, it is, it is, it is. I mean, it you is. know, you are just a product of your upbringing. And honestly, I, play, I, I play both sides. I when I'm talking to my white friends, you know, I'm like, oh, because I'm brown. And then when I'm talking to my Mexican friends, I don't understand because I'm white. You know, that's that's the way we do it. <laughs> Uh, of course, as I mentioned before, you and I met, well, we met obviously here, but we traveled to France. Mm-hmm. So I love to talk about obscure places. Yeah. What's your obscure place that you've always wanted to go to, Vicente? Antarctica. Right. I want to hit all the continents. You know, I want to go to all of the seven continents. Yes. Yeah, There's seven, seven right? Yeah, yeah. No, I knew that. I was checking if you knew that. <laughs> um, so what it is, is, is I think Antarctica would be amazing to see because there's nothing there. You know, I, I, yeah, my friend Brian was to go on his 50th birthday in Antarctica. I'm like, why? When I was on the cruise ship and we were in the middle of the ocean and you saw no land surrounding you, there's a very introspective feeling that comes over you to mm. be in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I can imagine it's the same thing in space. It's the same thing in the middle of the woods if you're by yourself. You know, like yeah. I'm on a ship with all these thousands of people, right. but I'm also on the deck in the middle of the night when there's nobody else around. Ooh. I wasn't like, you know, going to jump or anything. Um, I just was really taking that reality in you right. know, and just kind of being on my own in the universe for a moment so that's why i feel on, like in under the stars be, you can yeah. see like the stars oh my god, you see everything you know? oh my god that's mm-hmm. amazing. amazing what about yours edward um i think i want to go to lake titicaca <laughs> hey, well, sorry, excuse me you have titties and cacas lake titicaca and um Do you know caca is poo-poo in yes Spanish, right? <laughs> I, and, I, and i hope so, i'm sh- so shitty tits is shitty, <laughs> shitty tits <laughs> like, like my grandma <laughs> My grandma, if she was alive, she'd be listening like, why does that boy want to go to shitty tits? <laughs> shitty tits. I'm going to shitty tits, Bolivia. <laughs> or Peru. Or it's a, it's a, both, it's a it, lake it on the border both, of yes. both. It's on the border of uh, Bolivia and Peru. And uh-huh. it's the highest navigatable lake in the world. Sounds cool. I okay. mean, just. Do you just... want to just hike, th- go there and hike the mountains or to see the lake? Oh, hell no. Flown in by chopper. Dropped off to okay. see the lake. Do a take little the cruise Instagram around. Picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, take the Instagram picture. Swimming. Do a little cruise around, and take a swim, and then check out. Okay. That's about it. I'm sure that the elevation. I'm probably get get elevation sickness with that. Speaking of elevation sickness, I want to go to Switzerland and I want to oh. go see the Matterhorn. Well, you can just go down to the OC. The, <laughs> down there, see it. Yeah, that's. I was gonna say there's and a spend ninety nine dollars <laughs> and then seven dollars in a churro. Right. Uh, but no, I want to see the real Matterhorn uh, yeah, in Switzerland. That would be amazing. It's gorgeous, and you know. I didn't know that that was I've based never been... anything. I thought it was just called the Matterhorn. That's what it was called. No, it's a I real didn't... mountain in Switzerland. Oh, got yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I don't want to hike it. I just yeah. want to go and like I would love to see Mount Everest. I'm not going to hike Mount sure. Everest, but just to s- smell that fresh air. Oh, and, I like that too. You know, see it, those frozen bodies. Oh, yes. oh, 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 with jealous, like, look at you. <laughs> Have oh, some chocolate. Give me some. Honey, buy a give me, Rolex. Give me and... some vanilla chocolate all day long in yeah. Switzerland. Oh, is that I, what you want? I'm I not flew... talking about the candy. I, was oh, saying, oh, I flew oh. into okay. the, to Geneva um, only to go to Germany and France because that's the only way you could get there. You know the French oh. Alps, uh-huh. and um, and the water was like nine dollars. Um, wow, yeah. Switzerland is extremely expensive. Is it really yeah. more yeah, than yeah. Um, more than um, you think Iceland? Because Iceland was extremely. No, yeah, I was. Yeah, Iceland was there. for a hot dog was seventeen dollars. That's, that's a matter of like like where you're at. You're in the most northern like populated area in the middle of nowhere on an island, but Switzerland is in the middle of a bunch of... Like, you can yeah. get stuff for cheap. You, you yeah, just right? choose not to. It's they can't get over those mountains. Bastards. That's BS. Mm. Yeah. So, no, well, I, I still want to go. Yeah. So I have never been to Switzerland. Do it. Do it. 100%. I want to definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely go to there. So that's your Obscure Travel Places moment. Madonna Minute. Vicente, you worked with Madonna? I did, I did. So the production company that I worked for, they were doing a fashion documentary on on her um, costume designer that she's had for like 20 years. Oh. So they Adrian? Had always... Adrian? Mm-hmm. Adrian? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they, they were honoring her, and it was um, sponsored by um, Netta Porter, Mr. Porter, oh, wow. um, cool. who we work with um, a bunch. But yeah, so anyways, uh, the whole day was all about her coming in. She's coming in. She's coming. Here we go. We sat around for hours. She's late all the hours. time. Hours. It wasn't that Notorious she was late. They just late. had us shoot a bunch of stuff in the morning, and in the uh-huh. afternoon, they want, and they didn't want us to leave, so they just said, well, she can't come until 8. 
we would have done it too. Uh-oh. So we just sat there for five hours just hanging what? out. I would have been upset, but it's Madonna. You know, it's right. what, what she was not more than an hour late. So she's supposed to be there at 8. I think she got there at like 9.15. Oh, you know I what I mean? See. Okay. So she gets there and she walks in. And of course, like, you know, everybody just looks like <gasps> they have the Joker face. It's like, like, you're smiling. <laughs> smiling. Can you tell that I'm smiling on the microphone? You're all just so happy. And it's like, hi, Madonna, look at me. And so then she's looking. She comes walking in and she looks over at me and she does like this little head nod, like no joke. Like I didn't. She looked at you and yeah, said, she right she at okay. me and just she gave me like, she, she said, said you, you got an approval. Yeah. She was like, boop, like you work, you'll work here, you know, like mm-hmm. as a piece of furniture. Cause I'm sure I just look like this statue, you know. That's like, amazing. Hi, Dana, welcome to your shit. You know, it's like all I can do is smile right now because I'm looking, I'm within a, a foot of an icon, you wow. know? Wow. You absolutely better preach that, absolutely. Right and I don't know how I would react if Madonna would, gave you a nod of approval. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would melt. She she looked at melt. everybody in the room, you know, like she didn't come in. Everybody, every single person, this is so annoying because, you know, if she was a man, it would not be this way. But Ooh. every single person that came in or that I told this story to after the fact because I had to wait months until the documentary came out. Right. And then she, they go, was she a bitch? Why would you even ask that? Why would you ask that? Would you ask that at Tom Cruise? Would you ask that at Hugh Jackman? Yeah, and they actually are bitches, you know? Like, that's the thing, you know? So it's like, you have people out there in the industry who are these mega stars that are men that are awful. Nobody ever says Nobody says anything. So she comes in, she starts talking shit about the drapery behind her, which I loved, you know, because she's just like, what is this, a mortuary or something? Why why is it with these colors? And she's like, I'm already wearing all black. What do you want this to be like, you know? And not in a way that makes you, like, hate her, but just in a way that you're like, girl, I'm switching it up as we speak. And so I, like, ran out and got some new, like, pretty flowers, you know, like, and we just, like, kept everything going. She told this hilarious story about, like, when she was traveling with her family, and, and this is, includes the costume designer. And she said they all stopped, you know, in the middle of nowhere after driving all night long. They stopped this gas station. They only have gas station food. And she said, what's the one thing? And I swear, I have to would have to see the documentary to, to know this for a fact. I swear she said, what's the one thing this bitch wants? You know, and it's like they said they want everybody to tell a story about this costume designer. And so then she goes, what's the one thing this bitch wants? The whole van stinks. I go back there to see how everybody else is doing. I'm in one van. She's in another. She's in a van with a bunch, 10 other people. And what does she get? She gets pickled asparagus. It smells like ass throughout the entire van. And she's telling this story. And I'm like, you don't have any other stories you could tell about homegirl? You, you're trying to be that one? And it's because she's hilarious. You uh-huh. Know? Uh-huh. She was talking shit. And she's like, Give, where's my juice at? And she's like calling out to her. It's like her. She goes, oh, don't worry. She's my sister-in-law or something. I can talk to her like that. You know, it's like those are the things where like if you don't know, then yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, she is yeah. awful. But yeah. She's got she, a wicked sense of humor. Huh? Hilarious. Yeah. 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 Her yeah. whole vibe was just hilarious. And the whole time I'm like holding my phone as if I'm texting, just trying to get pictures of her, and all of them are just blurry and messy. You can't make out a damn thing, and I'm just, I'll never I'm, have a memory. I'm shaken. I'll never I have. I was nervous. I think it was. Yeah. I would be so nervous. Dropping the phone, you know. Yeah. Oh my like, god. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, oh, it snaps up her like watch or something. Oh, sorry, well, Madonna. Well, thank you for sharing your yeah. Madonna. She's minute. fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, Vicente, you know I sell insurance, correct? So you do? I do. <laughs> Excuse me. I sell life insurance, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, renters, and honey, this is a free commercial. Disability, <laughs> well, you name it, right? But apparently, I'm missing out on the big bucks. The St. Lawrence Agency, located in Almonte, Florida, provides alien abduction insurance why in florida there's no aliens down there they don't want them swamp asses they go to nevada or or was it new mexico uh, well honey th- th- apparently florida has a problem with aliens basically they sell you a policy for about 20 bucks that will cover you up to 10 million dollars that's good where can i get one you can get it out at almonte uh florida almonte that's where i live uh, <laughs> oh not almonte no, alamonte alamonte <laughs> Alamonte, Alamonte, Florida. St. Lawrence has sold about 6,000 policies. There are 6,000 people who bought this already, you're saying? There are 6,000 people in Florida. That's so sad. Who bought this? Florida, why Florida? That have 20 extra dollars a month? That's a ticket to... This is fiction, right? No, honey, this is real. I saw it on the news the other day. Okay, but how did they make... How did, like, somebody qualify for it? This is the thing. How do you qualify for a claim? He says you have to come back to Earth. 
it. How does he know if you were gone? There's there's proof. There's something like in your... St- um, he said he did pay out. This is uh, another catch. Okay. There's two people who claim that they are abducted by aliens. Lucky. One <laughs> one had was had an obstruction in his bowel. Okay, we've all been probed. <laughs> right. Uh, in West Hollywood. And another one had some, some other <laughs> East Hollywood. alien body in, the, uh, in, his, in their bodies as well. This is the key. So... That's just what if fetuses look like when they're smaller. If you're wondering how he can afford twenty million dollars for two men, right. he doesn't have to pay it all at once. The policy pays out the ten million dollars and distributions of one dollar per year for the next ten million years. That is so shady. Ten million years. Ten million years. But his family is gonna be balling. Like is later generation. And people are getting away with this. It's insane. People Saint end Lawrence, up paying into that these poor people. Saint Lawrence Agency is actually selling alien abduction insurance. Florida, put down the bath salts now. Definitely. Okay. I want anybody who's doing it. I know some beautiful people in Florida and it's I not do. a terrible state, but it is a terrible, terrible swamp land. You know, like God, I don't the understand the, the climate change. I don't understand. Even. Climate change, but, there's some you know alien what? insurance, We're bath gonna salts. have some great other segments in the future uh, about Florida and its craziness. You know, I, Come on, Florida, get it together. Yeah, that's Why, worse Florida? than Texas. Is it worse than Texas? It is. Oh, yeah. I would say that mm-hmm. put it over. There yeah, was, that, it was that, very neck and neck. Yeah, they were racing. Like <laughs> they have finished, been fighting. Finish, but <laughs> pulled ahead. Like we're building biscuit. a wall. Florida we're going is to space. Sea biscuit. <laughs> space force. <laughs> Alien abduction. Okay, you win. Florida, you win. Florida, Florida, you win. <laughs> Got it. Crocodile <laughs> is my husband. You take it. You take it. Go ahead. Good. You can go ahead. Get it. Go for it. All right, well, that's your Why Florida Why segment. Thank you for listening and continuing to subscribe to this podcast. I'm going to take a breath because I have a headache from laughing very hard. Um, I want to thank you, Vincente, for being my guest co-host for this evening. It was my pleasure, honey. (laughs) Did you have a good time? Oh, my God, I had, like, an amazing time. It was... (laughs) really great. Uh, I think the broads are going to be laughing their butt off and uh, this is exactly the kind of uh, great medicine we need in our lives. Just to be silly and stupid and don't care about what people are thinking. You know, we, we live in a life where it's so stressful and we have to be cool and yeah. collective and can we just be dumb for a minute? Yeah, take all the filters off your phone and off your life. Thank you. And just live it. And that, that's why I love you. Because mm-hmm. you don't give an F. No F's given. <laughs> Work queen. Sorry, I'm just, I'm off. Now you're really getting dorky. Okay, you were good at first. Now you're really dorky. So, but thank you again. We really enjoyed it. And uh, Edward, thank you again for co-producing. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. And And a pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. And we cannot wait to see you at the, uh, I don't know, the the Huntley or whatever. The Lexington. The Lexington. The Lexington Lexington on your stand-up night. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we definitely keep us uh, posted. Again, you guys, uh, catch his movie, Kiddo, on Vimeo. Vimeo, yep. Backslash on demand, backslash kiddo. Right on. I'm Queen Shan Shan, and thank you for listening to Abroad.